coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. FAA publishes long-awaited NPRM to expand drone operations. Archer fires up defense program with acquisitions. And California Fire Agency's keen on Pivotal's EV toll. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. FAA publishes long-awaited NPRM to expand drone operations. The U.S. DOT has officially dropped a long-anticipated rule that could change the game for American drone operators. Unveiled August 6 by Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy, the new proposed rule would finally allow unmanned aircraft to fly beyond visual line of sight without case-by-case -case exemptions. Under current rules, operators must apply for individual BV loss waivers to conduct most commercial drone flights, including delivering packages, monitoring crops, or inspecting infrastructure. The new rule would eliminate that bottleneck, replacing it with the nationwide framework to scale commercial operations while standardizing safety requirements. The FAA's rule lays out a structured pathway for both low-risk and more complex drone missions, allowing use cases from medical delivery to precision agriculture. Drones up to 1,320 pounds can be approved without going through the usual airworthiness certification process, as long as manufacturers meet FAA indoor safety standards. Operators will need to use or become FAA-approved automated data service providers to help track drones and prevent conflicts in the air. There are also mandates for cybersecurity safeguards, flight coordination roles, and detailed record keeping for every drone flight, plus restrictions on large gatherings of people. After the break, the month of model aviation begins. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gen Minute. The month of model aviation begins. The Academy of Model Aeronautics is once again recognizing August as Model Aviation Month, with National Model Aviation Day officially set for August 16, 2025. Now in its 12th year, the event invites AMA clubs across the country to showcase model aviation. While August 16th is the big day, the AMA Foundation acknowledges that not every club can host events on a specific date, so the celebration will continue throughout the entire month instead. Clubs are encouraged to schedule events whenever works best. ANA and Joby team up for Air Taxi Ops in Japan. ANA Holdings and Joby Aviation announce the expansion of their collaboration to begin commercial air taxi service in Japan. The companies will establish a joint venture to deploy more than 100 Joby eVTOL aircraft in a new air taxi ecosystem in Japan. The JV will focus on starting a phased rollout of operations in Tokyo and then accelerate the transformation of urban air mobility across the region and the country. The two companies will also develop the ecosystem needed for implementation, vertiports, pilot training programs, and aircraft maintenance operations. Embraer receives STC for Starlink in Praetor and Legacy models. Embraer announced it received FAA STC approval for Starlink connectivity in the Legacy 450 and Praetor 500, with approval for Legacy 500 and Praetor 600 expected during quarter 3, 2025. Certification by ANAC, the Brazilian National Civil Aviation Agency, is expected in quarter 4, 2025, followed by EASA certification in quarter 1, 2026. 
Starlink provides high-speed, low-latency internet through its own constellation of low-Earth orbit satellites for connectivity anywhere around the world. Its latency is below 99 milliseconds for greater in-flight reliability. Virgin Galactic delays space tourism project. Virgin Galactic has pushed back its expected launch date for the Delta spacecraft from summer to fall 2026. With its finances falling far short of expectations, however, even this timeline seems unsteady. The Delta is meant to be Virgin Galactic's next-gen suborbital craft, carrying six passengers, two more than its predecessor VSS Unity, on quick sightseeing trips to space. It's geared for faster turnaround times, leaving just three days between flights compared to Unity's once-a-month pace. It also targets a higher flight frequency of twice per week. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Archer fires up defense program with acquisitions. Archer Aviation announced two strategic acquisitions intended to speed up the development of its next-gen defense aircraft. Overair, a spin-off of Karem Aircraft, and Mission Critical Composites bring to Archer a patent portfolio, critical talent, composite manufacturing assets, and a 60,000-square-foot facility specializing in defense composites. The acquisitions build on Archer's strategic partnership in December 2024 with Anduril to co-develop hybrid autonomous VTOL military aircraft. That was followed up with $1.3 billion in capital raised to further the company's defense and commercial opportunities. Those developments raise the interest and demand for Archer from major allied defense programs around the world. Archer gains the patents and key employees from Overair in Santa Ana, California, combined with the composite manufacturing assets and a manufacturing facility from Mission Critical Composites, a specialized defense composite manufacturer in Huntington Beach, California. Those crucial assets will bolster Archer's ability to meet demand by bringing core composite fabrication capabilities in-house to support the needs of its defense program for rapid prototyping and iteration. After the break, California Fire Agency's keen on Pivotal's eVTOL. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. California Fire Agency is keen on Pivotal's eVTOL. Pivotal recently put on a series of public safety demos for several fire agencies in California to showcase the potential of its single-seat aircraft to drastically improve emergency response capabilities, particularly in locations where terrain, time, or traffic could be the difference between life and death. Pivotal collaborated with the San Bernardino Fire Department, Southern Marin Fire Department, and Consumnus Fire Department to present the demonstrations. For the demonstrations, Pivotal performed technical briefings, on-site precision crewed flights, and interactive sim sessions that permitted attendees to evaluate the aircraft's handling, safety features, and operational fit. Personnel including fire and EMS chiefs, dispatchers, and field personnel delved into flight logistics, dispatch integration, and widely disparate use cases that included ambulance deserts and disaster response. The attendees witnessed the aircraft's potential to fill critical gaps and emergency access. The response from the agencies was very positive for a number of benefits the Pivotal aircraft can bring to emergency response. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.